Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. <laughs> what your colleagues did. <laughs> yes, even as you want to let, say. Let, let me use the opportunity that you are here. Not, I know the matters are subjudice they are in court, but you know, most of our viewers um, have anxieties. In fact, it's the entire country that has anxieties with what is happening under the patriotic front. You have matters in court, but just speak to the issues broadly, you know, without um, <laughs> injuring matters that are in court. Yeah, mm. I, I think I'll quote the words of um, the former president, President Edgar mm. Sagalungu, that what is happening is an, an indictment on the judiciary. Mm. Mm. Uh, you know, there's what you call judicial activism. Mm. You know, and... Uh, and uh, Why do you say so? You know, what is going on is that uh, we have uh, a despotic government mm. that is arbitrarily in its approach. Okay? We have a government that does not respect the rule of law. Mm. Okay, you have a government that um, can violate the constitution mm. at will. Mm. So the last line of defense is the judiciary. Mm. You remember that you and I were old enough uh, during the UNIP times. Uh, Kaunda was a very strong president under one party state, but he respected the judiciary. Mm. Mm. We had uh, the courts, the judges sentencing KK's son to death yes. when Kaunda was in office. Yes, yes. Okay? So, because, I mean, they sent that was Judge Musumalia. Mus Musumalia, yeah. mm. sentenced mm. KK's son to death mm. when KK was in office. Okay? So, what? By virtue that the son to the president could be arrested, could be arraigned yes. before court, yes. detained yes. without bail. Exactly. Appear yes. you know, after commit, committed to the high court and after the trial sentenced to death. Yes. So whatever we called Dr. Kaunda at the time that was a dictator, yes. you can see you can that see, the people had sanctuary. No, the people had sanctuary he respects, in the judiciary. He respects the judiciary. Can we say the same thing? Of course not. And uh, you know, um, we, but uh, I still believe mm -hmm. that uh, time has come. Mm -hmm. Time has come when the judge, when the judiciary can make a difference. Because where we are now, uh, Emmanuel, uh, I'm happy that I, Jim Sam by himself, acknowledges the tension in the country mm. when he's uh, you know, re refusing uh, the opposition from having their meetings. In fact, that's <laughs> the issue of tension, political tensions existing. Now, the political tension is existing from various issues, that's multiple right. yeah. issues, from high cost of living, legacy issues such as poverty, you know, unemployment, the arbitrary nature of the president, where he's, for example, attempting to steal a political party. <laughs> That's right. There are so many things that have raised the political temperature to red. But our colleagues are speaking in peace. I said, are they not? Are they aware? And yeah. I think this is where an institution like the judiciary must respond to save this country. No, it's an indictment on the judiciary, and everybody's watching. Yeah, because uh, it, it, it doesn't matter, you know, what one says, Emmanuel. Uh, what's happening in the PF? is well documented and well known. Mm. Uh, we know the people behind that confusion. But um, above all... Are that, these internal fights? These are the internal. UPND have characterized this as just internal fights no, between members. In general, Speak to that. I mean, if there were internal fights, we wouldn't have had 200 policemen at Mulungushi on Independence Day. Uh, the visiting the policing, head of state. Yes, policing a private event which was um, ideally, what was it again? A retreat, a retreat. which mm. turned into a convention. If this was a private matter, uh, those expelled members of the party and suspended members would not be moving with police escort in and out of parliament. Mm. If it was an internal matter, would not get the speak of the National Assembly 
uh, responding, obeying uh, to letters from strangers. Mm. It was ignoring letters from the legitimate office holders. Mm. Yeah, so it can be an internal matter. And uh, I think that um, one miscalculation from our friends in the UPND is that um, they forgot the, under the current political dispensation, we basically only have two political we must sit and facilitate uh, for Zambia to revert to a one-party state. Mm. It would be very sad, uh, you know, a uh, turn of events uh, as, as that. Mm. Because, you, you, you know... Uh, Are your, all your efforts, all your eggs in one basket, the judiciary, if the president has appointed the chief justice, and if what we saw in parliament where they've defiled the law, the speaker has defiled the law, removed the legitimate leader of the house like yourself. Should <laughs> our eggs be in one basket called the judiciary? Won't they be subject to manipulation? What are your thoughts no, of as, course the, the, as part of the leadership of the PF? The final chapter uh, of this will be by PF members. PF members will have the final say. Mm. They will have the final say. I will not... Is it a PF matter or a Zambian matter? It's a Zambian matter, of course. Mm. It's a Zambian matter. It's a Zambian people actually they will have the final say on this matter. Mm. Yeah. So this matter, man, will not. Uh, uh, it should not be taken lightly. Uh, and I think what we have shown as leaders of the PF, we have shown civility. Mm. We are waiting upon the courts to do what they have to do. Mm. Uh, yeah, because that is the right thing to do. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, the Zambians are watching. The churches have spoken. Yeah. Civil society has spoken. Law Association of Zambia has spoken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, we know that uh, even our judges and the judiciary live in the same communities as we do. Mm -hmm. uh, they understand these things to the core. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we expect them just to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we will begin to conclude. What are the prospects for the end? Uh, the debt restructure, which provided hope for this government, and I think, uh, because I'm speaking to the parliamentarian... What does the president say? I think the last press briefing, we are all eager to hear uh, a message of hope mm. coming from the president. Mm. Mm. And I think the president took time to praise himself and brag about one or two things. That's all that we got from there. Mm. Yeah, so uh, there's no miracle that... Uh, that is coming. Uh, is coming. You see, uh, if you look at um, the shortage of forex, for instance, mm. we warned about... Um, uh, making mineral royalty tax deductible. Mm. And, uh, you know, our friends were saying we need to give an incentive to the mines. To the, mines. Uh, the question that we asked was, all right, you give them that incentive and we lose three billion kwacha, which is over $200 million per year. Mm. What do we get in return? What mm. if they don't respond? Mm. What if they don't ramp up production in the mining sector? What will happen? In fact, just to help with statistics, tax revenue following the implementation of the mineral royalty tax when we made it non-deductible. 2019-2020, government got um, tax revenue of over $1 billion from the mining sector. 2021 was the same. 2021 to 2022, before Honorable Msokotwane's measures came into effect, again was a $1 billion. These have now fallen to under $300 million. Exactly. So there's no miracle. And you see... Um, the reason is simple, Emmanuel, in that uh, you have what are called pre-commitments, mm -hmm. pre-agreements. Mm -hmm. Our friends were getting funding from these mining houses before they came into power. Mm -hmm. okay? And uh, for, for the mining houses to recoup and recover, they must have agreed with them mm -hmm. to say, when you take over power, we will provide uh, technical assistance. That's why we've got foreigners. ...member to a state-owned enterprise those with corporate status. Yeah. So the, 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 there's a problem because uh, we are now, uh, you know, out, 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 outsourcing governance. Mm, mm, yeah. So mm, our mm. friends have a real challenge because they are yoked. Yeah. They can't come out of it. They knew very well that um, by making mineral tax deductible, okay, we're going to lose revenue. Yeah. And the, 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 the possible impacts, the negative impacts on the economy, they were known. Mm. But what room did you, 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 have? You, you have a business background, well-known businessman in this country. How has this impacted on our people? Because I think that now ZDRA is desperate to raise revenue. From where? Because the easy money from, was from, from, from the mines. Yes. And I think our businesses must be well, businesses... under serious 
harassment. Go, go, go on the copper belt. I mean, I have a number of friends who have been running very successful businesses. Mm. These are employers. They've been employing people the past 20 years. They've literally retrenched everybody. Mm. They, can't mm. afford to, they can't afford to pay them. Mm. They don't have running contracts. Mm. And uh, many of those businessmen actually supported President Agaende Shilema. Mm. They mm. thought they were supporting somebody from the private sector. Somebody who understood and knew that um, you need to keep the private sector moving. You actually go out and ensure, okay, in the agricultural sector, who are the players? Yeah. Who are the local players? Do they have business? Mm. In the construction sector, who are the major local players? Do they have business? In the mines, who are the suppliers? Do they have business? That is the mindset that a businessman at the helm of a country should have. Mm. Ensure that the local businessmen uh, have enough business to drive the economy. In fact, the most yes. disappointed people must be the business oh, yes. sector because they've just been characterized as members of the PF, which is totally... Like that yesterday. Mm. <laughs> you, mm. you, you get my point. Mm. You know me. I mean, mm. we've been friends that long, so yes. Yes. I'm not speaking from without. Yeah. 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 So these are, are, are businessmen that um, have been there. Okay? They are employers. They have assisted people. They have contributed to the development of this country. Mm. Now, for a fellow businessman, the name of President Aka in the to come and brush them, to come up and treat them as if they're criminals mm. is most unfortunate. And the taxes are not think, helping. Today, I, today I just learned of um, a new tax that has come in effect. I think over 60% of exercise duty on uh, alcohol, spirits, and uh, 60%. Yeah. And I think it will close down. And I think on methanol alone, again, there's a new tax that has come. Uh, uh, Airtel and MTN have announced the new charges, the, you know, this levy that has come for mobile money transactions. I don't know if the idea is to, to ramp up domestic revenue or to push people back to banks. I don't know if it is to fight a technologically, you know, uh, set... A transaction that has done very well for our yes, people. Yes. You don't need to be banked to no, for you no, to no, conduct but they, but financial they're, they're transactions. Killing that. Yeah, they're killing that. Yeah, they are, You see, the I think what uh, when government is crafting a policy, mm, mm. there is what we call a rear mm. regulatory impact assessment. Mm. You do a simulation. Yeah. Okay, to try and appreciate the possible impacts. Okay. Mm. Now you see um, the frustration. Mm -hmm. The frustration that uh, this government is having on the local businessmen. Uh, yes, the president will celebrate. You know, he thinks, no, 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 they can no longer drive, they can never. No, no, no. It doesn't work like that. And retrench everybody else. Mm. Yeah, so the impact is more on the workers. Mm. Yeah, so we need government uh, through Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprises mm. to understand the local businesses, mm. profile them. Mm. Who are the key players? Who mm. are employing our people? Mm. So do they have business? Can they remain in business for the next three years? Mm. Forget the surname of the chairman of that company mm. or the director mm. of that company. Okay, but what the company is contributing. Yeah. Because yeah. when he lays off 600 people, mm. you're going to have a problem as a government. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You're going to have a, he may not have a problem. Mm. Okay. He may, he may not have a problem. Mm. He may rely on his reserves, mm. on his profits, and do business elsewhere. Mm. But you are going to have a problem as, as a government. Mm. Yeah. So we need government to be a bit more proactive. Government to be like you to said, understand. the stretcher. This is a businessman <laughs> yeah. yeah. who, who holds himself with yeah. reputation that is yes. a businessman and economist. And you didn't think that you'd be the one bad for business. <laughs> no. The leader and was bad for business. And leaders, for those that have come out and said they want to do politics, mm -hmm. you don't compete with businessmen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you chose to be a politician. <laughs> Somebody else chose to be a businessman. Yeah. Yeah. Don't compete with them. Don't try to respect kill them. Their respect them, yes. Mm. Respect their terrain. That's mm. what is expected. Before we wind up, the, you're from a rural constituency. The agriculture sector is a matter of worry. Food security is a matter of worry. We have the El Nino effect. It may not affect your area in the north, but has affected this country. The fertilizer distribution has been chaotic. What are your views about the agriculture sector and how it is impacting? Do you think... What's our state of food security this year, especially that we had um, exported most of our maize and, you know, our national strategic reserve is almost dry? I think, I think if, if you monitor the trend, you know, uh, never celebrated there. No. People never heard that yes. it's the first time it's happening. No, it's the first time it was happening. <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, so we, we were so comfortable mm. and uh, the point that 
in 2021, we still will have maize for 2019, mm -hmm. right? So we were food secure. And it was because, uh, let, let's take, for example, just for you to understand that mm. PF was running very efficient systems. Mm. We had COVID uh, between 2019 and 2020. Mm. In those years, by August, all the warehouses were stocked with fertilizer. Mm. Despite the logistical challenges, you have to move stock and so on. Um, in the election year in 2021, mm. by August, all the fertilizers were in the warehouses. Mm. I mean, this tells you uh, the premium that uh, the PF government placed mm. on the agricultural sector. Mm. Because we understood that this is one sector that employs a, you know, a close to 50-60% of, uh, of the population. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And uh, we needed to be food secure. Mm. The time the P U M M U P N D came into power, we went down by 25%. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, we, we produced 2.6 million tons. We mm. went below 3 million, yes. 3 million yes. tons. And for the first time in so many years. Mm -hmm. We said, all right, we give it the benefit of doubt. Maybe it's because they've just uh, started. Mm -hmm. The following year, they actually started giving fake <laughs> projections. In terms mm -hmm. of, they have now been very clear about what we're producing. Yeah. 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 But the, the truth of the matter is that um, they have mishandled the agricultural sector. Mm -hmm. and they mishandled it, one, because they didn't understand the challenges that even came with the e-voucher system. Mm. Mm. They were accusing, I heard the president telling people in southern province mm. that mm. you, they were just giving you this and yet they should have gone... I was distressed by yes. that allegation that the president knew the e-voucher card. Mm. So mm. remember that there was a value that was loaded in those cards. Yes. And yes. depending on the price of fertilizer, which was 300 at the time, mm. people mm. could get between 6 and 7 bags countrywide. Mm. 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 Those of us that had no communication, because most of our towers are not being constructed, at the we time, had gone yes. on a direct supply system. Mm. So the number was fixed to 6. Mm. Mm. So when the prices of fertilizer started changing, especially during the COVID time, mm. Mm. you see the quantum of support was fixed on the card. Okay. okay. You, you get, mm. There was no mechanism to um, change the value that was on the card. Mm. And mm. members were now affected because the unit price of, of, of fertilizer changed. Mm. But note that an area was isolated because of the region where it was. Mm. An e-voucher card on the copper belt was the same as one in eastern province, one mm. in southern province and so on and so forth. Mm. Yeah, so when we hear uh, a president go on the platform uh, to mislead citizens, mm. want to pit them against the from other, another mm, region. Mm, I think that's most unfortunate. Mm, and uh, we want to call upon the president that that should not happen. Mm, we don't expect, you know, that sort of uh, uh, statements coming from the head of state. Mm, he himself mm, has mm, been saying he wants to fight tribalism and mm, regionalism. Mm, you know, he can't go on a platform. But he's fostering he, 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 his he, comments. He, you know, you can't do mm, that. Mm, yeah, because the Minister of Agriculture had people from across the country working mm. there. Directors mm. came from all over. Mm. It was a bit different, Emmanuel, mm. uh, that uh, you see, during our time, Article 259.2 mm. was adhered to. Mm. What does it state? It talks about um, those that have been um, you know, empowered to make appointments, they must, mm. uh, he should appoint a task force. Mm. You know, that should come up with a report. Mm. Uh, to and establish the facts. Establish the facts. Mm. You know, Because at the moment, sadly, you have over... 300 civil servants that are packed at um, the Public Service Management Division, PSMD, yeah. that are waiting literally for dismissals. Yes. You have some senior members that are attached to cabinet office. And when we say this, they are literally at home. Yes. And then you have people that have replaced them. So literally you have double salaries. And what is the justification for those dismissals? No, no, we, we need a very task, simple. We need a task force. Very, very yeah. simple. It's literally that they worked with the previous government. And the civil, these civil servants, public servants, have been unfairly treated. Yeah. yeah. So I think, I think, uh, so it's because of that, Manu, that, um, you know, I know most of the civil servants. Mm. Uh, mm. They've got 30, 25 to 30 years experience in the civil service. Mm. Mm. And you can't lose that human resource mm. and expect to function smoothly. Mm. You and I know. Uh, I was minister for the first time in um, in, uh, in northern province in in, in 2016. Mm. I was coming from the private sector. Mm. The first thing I did was to call my peers, Robert and Kunika, mm. very good man. I said, "Look, uh, teach me how to be minister. You know, I want to function effectively." <laughs> yeah. And it mm. took me through one month uh, training, and you know, so imagine that uh, 
if PS in Kunika was also new, mm. he went in at the same time that I went in. And they brought in... There'll a, be two green horns. Yes, they mm. bring in some a rowdy fellow who begins to demean the directors, mm. like we've seen in some cases. Mm. I would not have learned anything. Mm. I, you know, I, I became a very good minister. No, I can know, confirm public service, the civil service is a forest. It doesn't matter how educated you are. Yes. There's a tradition, there's yes. a culture. You have to understand it. There are procedures yes. and processes. Coming in. I want to say this, Emmanuel. Yeah. Um, even if somebody raised an issue mm -hmm. to do with appointments under the PF, one thing they will not say is that um, people were brought from outside. Mm. People were promoted from within the civil service. Mm. Mm. Okay? Mm. It doesn't matter what other mm. argument you have. Mm. This mm. person was either a director, mm. and uh, yes, they've got a master's as required, mm. then they became a PS. Mm. So all those promotions came from within yeah. the civil service. Yeah. Yeah. They were, it wasn't like we're seeing now. Mm. Okay? Uh, because yeah, I can give you an example. One of the issues uh, that you know that that was prominent, Mr. Sata came, sweeping the MMD, came into office, and for example, the staff at Foreign Affairs remained the same. Yes, he promoted the directors in Felix in Kulukusa and Pamela to be permanent secretary. Yes. He didn't say I'm new. This civil servants work with the MMD. No, he recognized their expertise, their yes. training. And, you know, their capability to discharge their duties. Exactly. But exactly. this president literally purged yes. the civil service. That's true. Mm. And he thinks everybody must be new. Honorable Brian Mundi, I would like to thank you for coming. I am aware that you have a bereavement on the copper belt, and you actually delayed your travel. My condolences to you. You delayed your travel just to be part of the conversation. I think the nation is in crisis. I think we needed to discuss the various issues that we, are, we have discussed. To our dear viewers and listeners, I will gladly meet you tomorrow with um, you know, God's blessings. I hope to uh, host one of your dear brothers, Honorable Harry Kalawa, oh, citizen, Harry. first <laughs> president. As my childhood friend. Yes. Oh, you know him very of well. Course, besides of course. Yes, yes. He'll be here. He's um, on some assignment, but... Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.